You've probably been captivated by those deep, detailed images of the cosmos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. They feel like windows opening onto infinity. But down here on Earth, a new observatory is starting to deliver results that are right up there. The Vera Rubin Observatory has just taken its first observational steps, and it looks incredible. Atop a mountain in Chile, this observatory has begun photographing the sky with the largest digital camera ever built for astronomy. Picture a camera the size of a compact car, weighing about 2.8 metric tons and able to capture, with each click, an image of roughly 3.2 billion pixels. Yes, billions. It's an absurd amount of information. No surprise that in a single night of observations, the survey can generate something like 20 terabytes of data. Since the observatory operates in Chile, but the central processing happens in the United States, a dedicated ultra-high capacity link on the order of 100 gigabits was set up to connect the facility to Miami, where the data stream enters infrastructure already prepared for this deluge of information. The first official images were released to the public in June 2025, and honestly, they rank among the most striking astronomical records we've ever seen. And the best part, this is just the beginning. What exactly do these first portraits show us? How were they produced? And what do scientists hope to discover with this project over the coming years? Today, we'll look at what's already been revealed and understand why Rubin could change the way we study the universe. Some operations are already underway, but the final tests should extend through the end of 2025. And it's wonderful to see how an observatory destined to become a reference point carries, in its name, a tribute to another icon, Vera Rubin, the astronomer who, at a time when few women had space in the field, was pivotal in providing the first convincing evidence for dark matter all while balancing scientific life and motherhood. It makes perfect sense that such a pioneering project bears the name of an equally pioneering scientist. One obvious reason space telescopes like Hubble and James Webb produce such clean images is that they observe from above the atmosphere, far from air turbulence and light pollution. For a ground-based observatory to compete at that level, you need the ideal setting. That's why Rubin was built in Chile's Atacama Desert, on a mountain beneath some of the driest, darkest skies on Earth. It's no accident that the region hosts other powerful facilities, such as SOAR, Gemini South, the Giant Magellan Telescope, and Europe's Extremely Large Telescope. It's a prime observation hub, tested and proven on multiple fronts. Another interesting point. Rubin isn't run by a large international space agency. Funding comes from the U.S. National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy, with operations led by the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy. The star of the complex is the Simoni Survey Telescope, which, once completed, joined the list of the largest on the planet. The primary mirror is 8.4 meters in diameter, the secondary 3.5 meters, and there's also a third mirror at 5 meters. While most large telescopes use two mirrors, Rubin uses three, improving the correction of aberrations and ensuring exceptional sharpness over a very wide area of the sky. Mounted to this giant eye is the camera we mentioned, a colossus about 3 meters long and 1.6 meters wide. It captures light in the near ultraviolet, visible, and near infrared switching filters with the help of a robotic arm. The camera is the heart of the Legacy Survey of Space and Time, LSST, which will scan the sky repeatedly over a decade. To pull this off, the camera packs 189 sensors and three huge fused silica lenses, delivering impressive optical quality in every exposure. A single image covers an enormous field of view, about 10 square degrees, the equivalent of roughly 45 full moons at once. Set these numbers alongside earlier projects and the difference jumps out. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey, SDSS, took about 20 years to map 35% of the sky. With LSST, Rubin can cover the entire visible sky of the Southern Hemisphere, practically half the celestial dome, 
every three days. In other words, the long-term goal isn't just to expand the mapped area, but to add a temporal dimension to that map. A 10-year movie of the sky, where we can see what changes, when it changes, and for how long it changes. Like every great survey, LSST is built to find everything it can in the night sky. But four central science goals guide the project. Investigate the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Catalog solar system objects such as asteroids and comets. Monitor transient phenomena, supernovae, variable stars, fast high energy outbursts, and map the stellar population of the Milky Way. Missions and surveys like Gaia, PanStars, DES, and SDSS itself pave the way, and Rubin is here to scale up both depth and scope. The best part is we won't have to wait a decade to see results. The team plans to release images and data along the way, letting the public follow science in real time. And even in the testing phase, we've seen what it can do. In just over 10 hours of initial observations, Rubin recorded millions of stars and galaxies and immediately identified thousands of asteroids. It's a taste of what's coming. One of the first published compositions became known as the Cosmic Treasure Chest. It combines 1,185 exposures taken over seven nights, pointed at a region south of the Virgo Cluster, about 55 million light years away, the nearest large cluster of galaxies to our galactic home. The mosaic, covering about 25 square degrees, is a parade of structures. Foreground stars, well-resolved nearby galaxies, and a background speckled with myriads of redder, more distant galaxies. In one corner, two spirals stand out, with an interacting trio just above, and filaments of matter connecting some of these stellar islands. On the other side, an area nicknamed Cosmic Drama mixes bright Milky Way stars and dozens of well-defined galaxies set against a deep sea of ancient light. A quick estimate, that single image contains on the order of 10 million galaxies, and yet it represents only about 0.05% of the 20 billion Rubin expects to observe over the full survey. The scale is almost inconceivable. Another highlight from this first batch is a nebula mosaic captured in just seven hours, combining 678 individual images. In single exposures, clouds of gas and dust can look faint, almost invisible, but carefully stacking many frames makes the details pop. At the center of the mosaic is the Lagoon Nebula, Messier 8, about 5,200 light years away. It's a famous star-forming region, one of the few of its kind that, under ideal conditions, can be seen with the naked eye, albeit very faintly. In a small telescope, it typically appears grayish because our eyes have limited sensitivity to certain wavelengths. Rubin sensors capture a broader range and, in processing, different bands can be mapped to different colors. For comparison, remember the famous Hubble portrait of the Lagoon from 2018. Hubble also uses multi-band compositions to highlight elements we wouldn't see on our own, and the level of detail is incredible. The difference is that Hubble sees very small patches at a time, with a narrow field of view. That image spans roughly four light years across, an extraordinary close-up. Rubin, meanwhile, covers huge areas in one shot. The lagoon as a whole is about 55 light years wide and 20 high, and even so, it takes up only a fraction of Rubin's frame. In simple numbers, Hubble can capture, in a single pointing, roughly 1% of the apparent area of our full moon. Rubin, in a single exposure, sees about 40 full moons. That's a difference of approximately 4,000 times the area per frame. It's not that one replaces the other, these are complementary tools. Hubble and James Webb deliver jaw-dropping close-ups. Rubin shows the big picture with enough resolution and depth to reveal patterns on a cosmic scale. Back to the nebula mosaic, you can spot other objects in the same region. At the top, a bluish grouping stands out. The open cluster, Messier 21. Just below it is the Trifid Nebula, Messier 20 with its pinkish-blue glow, 
about 9,000 light years away in the constellation Sagittarius, a classic target for small telescopes. Farther down appears another open cluster known as NGC 654, very compact in the wide frame, and near the lower center, a dense globular cluster listed as NGC 6544, gathering tens of thousands of stars. It's striking to think that, in that giant image, an entire globular cluster becomes just a tiny speck. That gives you a sense of how vast this camera's field really is. And we're not just talking about pretty pictures. Even in these tests, Rubin started delivering real science. In about 10 hours, the team identified 2,104 asteroids that had never been cataloged, including seven near-Earth objects, all with no risk to us, thankfully. For comparison, observatories worldwide find around 20,000 new asteroids per year. Rubin alone is expected to discover millions in just the first two years of full operations. This capability is also promising for catching interstellar visitors like Oumuamua, Borisov, and 3i Atlas, which occasionally pass through the solar system. It's estimated that such objects pass through our inner neighborhood about once a year, but detecting them requires fast, wide surveys. Exactly what Rubin does. Another encouraging early result, the observatory identified 46 RR Lyrae stars, an ancient class of pulsating star used as cosmic yardsticks to measure distances. Over the survey, the expectation is to find something on the order of hundreds of thousands of these stars, possibly extending more than a million light years from Earth. With that census, it will be possible to refine the map of the Milky Way's edges and explore its outer structure, its halos, stellar streams, and sparsely populated regions. And remember this number. In just its first year of regular surveying, Rubin is expected to collect more optical data than all major observatories have gathered, combined, to date. By the end of the decade-long survey, projections point to something like 500 petabytes of data involving billions of objects and trillions of measurements. It's a scientific goldmine that will fuel research for decades, including questions we don't even know to ask yet. Once testing wraps up and the survey hits its intended cadence, Rubin will sweep the southern sky over and over, capturing fleeting events almost live. A supernova that flares and fades in weeks, a star that changes brightness over hours, an asteroid crossing the field in minutes, while simultaneously building a long-term time-lapse of the universe. It's like having an illustrated celestial diary, with new pages filled night after night. Personally, I'm already blown away by these first samples, and the real survey hasn't even started. If this is the appetizer, imagine the feast. It's hard to contain the curiosity about what we'll still see, measure, and understand. Enjoyed what Ruben has shown so far? Then drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you can catch upcoming discoveries firsthand. Tell us in the comments, which image impressed you more, the cosmic treasure chest or the wide field lagoon nebula? And if this video inspired you, share it with someone who loves astronomy. It helps the channel grow a lot. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.